Good evening, barflies and lounge lizards, and welcome to a very last minute Christmas special kind of thing. And with me, I have a very special guest, Doug from Disheveled by Dawn. Hey guys, uh, thank you very much, Slim, for, uh, for inviting me on. Okay, so what even kind of spawned this idea to do this special like this is, I've been watching the Rambo movies. I actually just finished them last night. I'd only seen the second and the third one, and it wasn't since I was a child, but I just kind of got it in my mind that I needed to see the Rambo movies, and so I just watched them all, and man, I'll tell you, I'm a big Rambo fan now. I know, dude. Rambo is awesome. <laughs> uh, have you seen all of them? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched the last one last night, and man, I was, and pardon the pun, blown away by that dude, one. Dude, that one was violent <laughs> i gotta say it's probably the first one is my favorite but uh part five is probably my second favorite and then of course uh like you said violent and but nothing really compares to the violence level of uh, the fourth one yeah yeah see we saw that one i i believe that one came out around christmas maybe um and we we uh went as a like a little family uh to, to go see that one fantastic and you know, the first one i noticed there's a scene in the police station where there's a christmas tree on the counter so technically there you go christmas movie yeah yeah but actually yeah before we get into the nitty-gritty of the episode the, the action movie talk let's talk a little bit of christmas yes Santa, for anything this year i did um i asked for um, a couple of movies Mm -hmm. as as you would you would you would expect um some D, &D stuff some magic mm -hmm. stuff you know just you know a couple couple of vinyls I, d I do know there is a vinyl under the tree right now so yeah kind of hard to wrap that without giving it away yeah <laughs> it's, well, it's kind of like when i was when i was young and they wrapped up my uh n64 with white wrapping paper hmm Okay. <laughs> yeah, my mom always was really clever with that kind of stuff because I was a major video game fan as a kid and really into arcades. And we kind of the best arcade in town was this place called Diamond Gems. And she went and got me, I don't know, five or ten dollars worth of tokens and put them in a box and wrapped it under the tree. And I had no idea what that was inside that box. I mean, it was shaking around. It was, you know, that was a real surprise, that one. That's cool. That's cool. So then I'll ask, speaking of childhood, what is your kind of Christmas story moment? What is that toy from childhood that was the Red Ryder BB gun for you? Well, I, th I think I think my one well, my one story I, I go back to a lot, especially now that I have a, a young one, you know, and she's kind of you know doing the same thing, won't open those Christmas presents early. Um, I guess it was around eighty three, eighty four. Um, uh, parents got me a Waltman and a Kiss Lick It Up cassette, and uh, you know I, I kept begging, "Let me open something! Let me open something!" Finally, my mom let me open that Kiss tape, and I was able to, you know, listen to it. Uh, and, and then also, well, one gift wasn't good enough for me, so I also had to have some uh, action wrestling action figures, which they were like WWF or anything like that. They were like some name uh, nameless uh wrestlers but you know i was into it <laughs> so did your family do the thing where you were able to open one gift on christmas eve and then the rest on christmas morning um uh, yeah um but like like i said i i usually snuck in there and you know got got a couple beforehand and but then then of course you know mom would rewrap them you know so dad mm. dad didn't know Right. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you mine. I, mine's clear too. I mean, I actually had that kind of red rider BB gun kind of toy, the thing I wanted so badly and could just visualize it. And, and that was my pet monster. The year that my pet monster came out, I wanted one so badly. And then it was wrapped there under the tree and I could tell what it was. I mean, obviously it was a giant my pet monster, but just knowing and seeing it there for the full month, man, it was like wonderful torture. That's, that's nice. That's, that's awesome. I, I wanted that as well. Never got one though. I remember even, I even punched a little bitty hole in the wrapping paper, just, just a tiny one, just so I could peek in there and see that glorious blue nose in the, in the paper. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. I guess we'll then get into the action movies. 
Um, what are, what's some of your favorites? Well, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and mention this one because it is Christmas time, and mm-hmm. and you know people people like to argue is Die Hard a Christmas movie, but no one ever argues is Cobra a Christmas movie. I mean, Ooh. you know, they're they're they're. It's obviously Christmas. That maybe there's no Christmas party or anything like that, but you know, got the Christmas tree up in the uh, the market, the the supermarket. Um, I believe in the uh, the police station. There's like Christmas stuff, mm. so it, it's a Christmas movie. But I think uh, um, Cobra. It's probably like one of my favorite. It's from like '86. I tell you, I saw Cobra at the theater as a kid, and I absolutely loved it. That was one of my favorite movies. I haven't seen it since I was a kid, though, weirdly, but I loved it back in the day. That was that was a regular in my household. Yeah, it, it's it's freaking awesome. Plus, you know, his car is like mm-hmm. a weird thing about that movie, and and I, I really didn't even realize it, especially at the time. It was um, originally Sylvester Stallone was going to be in Beverly Hills Cop, and. You know, that's based on a, a book. Uh, I think it's called Fair Game, something like that. And then uh, Sylvester Stallone, like, rewrote the uh, the, the script mm-hmm. and, like, took a lot of the humor out and made it more action. And then uh, Paramount was like, uh, no, we're, we're not going to do that. And he just took his things. And, you know, obviously Eddie Murphy ended up getting getting apart, but he took his things and it pretty much became Cobra. So, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You know, people really don't give Sly Stallone enough credit for, you know, he's a very creative, intelligent guy. And I people just, I don't know, they just write him off, but he's a great writer. I mean, you look at some of his best movies, most of his best movies, he either wrote them or co-wrote them. Yeah. I, I, but I, like you mentioned, uh, uh, First Blood, when, when we got going here, man, I mean, that that's an emotional movie. It is. I mean, yeah. that movie is dark. Like it's, I uh, almost wouldn't even consider it an action movie. I mean, it's got the action, but oh yeah, it, it's oh, yeah. so much more. I think. Mm-hmm. And because I mean, just another good example of that is at the end, he kind of solves his little his battle about five ten minutes before the movie ends, and then the rest <laughs> is just his breakdown. With the fourth one, I don't know if this is true, but I I had heard somewhere that his son Sage who was a big into the exploitation scene. He was actually one of the co-founders of Grindhouse Releasing back in the day, which was a kind of a boutique label before mm-hmm. your Vinegar Syndromes and stuff that oh, would yeah. restore oh, these yeah. you know, classic exploitation and Grindhouse movies, that he was a big influence on that one. And that's why it's so over the top violent and bloody and gory. Hmm. Like I'll tell you that one, that uh, fourth one, it might be the goriest non-horror movie I think I've ever seen. <laughs> so, yeah. would you consider like like uh, James Bond action, or is that you know is that well, that's too much uh, spy movie? What what would you what would you consider? Oh, that's a that's a great question. I would I would go spy movie, but I guess spy mm-hmm. movie would be a subgenre of action. Yeah. So, so what, what, what's, what's your all, all time favorite, uh, action movie? Well, I mean, I guess it kind of depends in the strictest definition of what you consider action. Cause would you consider escape from New York an action movie? Cause that would probably be right up there. Yeah. And then we then, would dig into martial arts films. If you're going to put martial arts films on the table, then mm-hmm. that's a whole nother ballpark of action movies. <laughs> Well, do you have an all-time favorite, or would Cobra be the all-time favorite? Uh, I, I think Cobra probably would hmm. be my all-time favorite, and, and, and that's when I mean because I, I feel Cobra is like a, and, and plus uh, you know you have uh, Brian uh, Thompson and, and and Cobra, and uh, you know I, I got that man crush on Brian Thompson. He has that amazing like facial structure. Um, hmm. Right, he, right. He was he was in Kindred the Embrace. He was in Friday Night Two. Uh, he he's been in lots of things, and I, I love him. He's like the main protagonist. Um, the, uh, he's over like the Night Slashers or whatever. And, and, and you know, you always have these awesome one line uh, liners, right? Mm-hmm. And his uh, on, on that one, it was like, "You're the disease, I'm mm-hmm. the cure." Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's the thing with with uh, some some of the all time great uh, action movies. You always have those one liners. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that was an interesting thing too about the early Rambos is they were very somber, serious yeah. movies. And Rambo himself, he actually really doesn't talk very much, but when he does, he makes it count. Yeah. And it's just like he walks into the town. He has the American flag and he has his little hair a little longer. And mm -hmm. right then, that police officer, you're getting out of my town, boy. Well, <laughs> you I mean, know, it's being a long hair from way back and you relate as well growing up in a small southern town with long hair yeah. i really related <laughs> to just that yeah, yeah. for sure because i mean i had long hair for a good 20 year, 20 something years so i mean i, mm -hmm. I remember i remember <laughs> well yeah um, it's just that movie that movie probably would be a, a, a number two okay well let's just go kind of late 80s early 90s here of the kind of stars that popped up at that time um you have your van dams and your seagulls and all that mm -hmm. gary daniels and who was your person because i think everyone kind of had their person that they really dug um I mean, I guess uh, it would be Sylvester Stallone, man. Okay, yeah. I mean, he would he would be my dude. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, actually, Trent and I was having a conversation the other day about uh, were you a Seagal fan or a Van Damme fan? Mm -hmm. And I was the Van Damme fan because of nothing else, Cyborg, you right. know, <laughs> and the blood sports freaking awesome so yeah of the two i mean i never was seriously into either because i think by that point i had already kind of i was getting into hong kong cinema by that point so i was like oh mm -hmm. yeah when people were talking yeah about van damme but of the two definitely more of a van damme person yeah yeah and i will say this van damme. i saw street fighter two times opening weekend <laughs> i mean come on, how can you go wrong with that one yeah, we we saw Street Fighter, and you had a bunch of dudes and their their, their teens at, at Taco Bell after the movie. Man, we were pumped. No, it, but yeah, watching it, it was fun. It was like, a fun. lot of fun, <laughs> and that's a great cast too. Like if you look back at that cast, I mean, not only have Van Damme, you know, Raul Julia, Kylie Minogue was Cammy. I mean, Ming Na Wen was. I mean, just a great cast in that one. West yeah. Duty. I got that on uh, on Blu-ray Steelbook the other day. Well, I say other day. It was actually probably about a year ago. But <laughs> The Transformers will return after these messages. It's about speed, strength, size, and skill. Game over! In the battle to save the world. If my $20 billion are not delivered, the hostages will die. These heroes... <laughs> will go all the way. You have to do better than that. Okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Raul Julia. No! Street Fighter. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. I got it! Wow! Introducing the G.I. Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier. Sky Striker Landing! It's big, tough, and built to carry all the planes, men, and equipment Joe needs to go into battle against Cobra. Cobra Jet! Some assembly required. Feel the jet! Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier comes with what you see here. Other figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. Oh dear. What's wrong, Birdie? We'll never have time to send out all these holiday greetings. Too bad you can't send one big card, Ronald. Maybe we can. Ooh. Come on. Happy holidays, everybody. We now return to the Transformers. And on the reverse note, that was an interesting time because you had Street Fighter, which was good, and you had Mortal Kombat, which was also good. Yep. I was I was definitely there for the Mortal Kombat too, dude. I mean, I loved, I loved uh, the first one. The, the second one, ah, gosh, it's been so long since I've seen it. I, I, I know it wasn't one I went back to a lot, but the first one I did, I did go back to that one quite a bit. Well, here's a question and very fitting in the topic. And I think you were definitely, I mean, you could like both, but I think it wasn't either or kind of thing to a degree, Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Uh, 
video game, not in film. Yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah, 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 I know what video you're I, 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 was, I was definitely better at Mortal Kombat, um, but our circle of friends just, we have memories of like, all right, all right, before we go to, you know, we, we crash over our friend Randy's house and it's, all right, who's going to be the king of the house? And we'd have like these treat fighter uh, tournaments between a couple guys that you know, there, whoever wins it gets the sofa. You have to get the floor if you lose. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to pick. I think uh, I think the vibe of Mortal Kombat more, but I mean, I just Street Fighter is so much fun. Yeah, I'm definitely a Street Fighter person. I liked Mortal Kombat, but Street Fighter was just where it was at for me. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I actually, whenever I got Street Fighter Two, I got it on the same day as I got my uh, Super Nintendo mm. and Super Star Wars. So that oh, was that yeah. was an exciting. We were like going down to Savannah that day, and we. Went by KB Toys and. Uh, Do you ever cool. get past that first level in Super Star Wars? Because man, mm. those Super Star Wars games were hard. They were, man. They were. Okay, well, speaking of kind of the the action heroes of the '80s, I'll tell you a movie I always really liked. Saw multiple times in the theater. People don't really talk about it, and the time they only talked badly about it, and that was Last Action Hero. God, you took it out of my mouth, dude. So, so like when '90s hit. I was kind of kind of away from the whole action movie. I was kind of over it. But Last Action Hero, that that brought me back in, dude. And that soundtrack. That uh, that's soundtrack, what I was going to say. I bet it was that soundtrack was why you went to go see it. <laughs> Probably. That soundtrack was freaking amazing. And, and whenever I go back and think about that movie, the biggest thing I always think about was when that dude's, the contacts, mm -hmm. uh, the contact guys, uh, when he had like a, was it like a smiley face contact? Yeah, he had several, one. yeah. Yeah, dude. I, that's one definitely the top 90s uh, action movie for me. Really creative premise, too. Like you yeah. really hadn't kind of seen like jumping from movies sort of. Yeah. And, and I, I not like that kind of weird stuff anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I love the scene too, where he's in the video store. I always like um, scenes in video stores, especially now looking back any oh, yeah. movie where has a scene in a video store, I dig, but the, the cardboard cutout of Sylvester Stallone <laughs> as the Terminator. <laughs> Yes. Awesome stuff. That was, yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't really say too, especially at the time, being a young, long haired type, really into metal, a movie with a good, like kind of eighties metal or early nineties metal soundtrack. That was a, that was a selling point for me back then. I would see movies just because, oh, well the soundtrack seems cool. The movie must be too. <laughs> I, I completely agree. I am totally on board with that. And I, and I do think you're right. I do think that is why I ended up going and see that movie was because of that soundtrack. And speaking of our action stars of the 80s, I always really dug too when they would kind of step outside the box and do like comedies. You know, I don't think Arnold Schwarzenegger gets enough credit for how good his comedies are. That's true. Because I uh, love Jingle all, <laughs> Jingle all the Way. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. I try to catch that every year. Yeah, Jingle All the Way, of course, Kindergarten Cop, even though I mm -hmm. guess that could, you know, kind of sort of a little straddling the fence into both worlds, but still, Kindergarten Cop's a great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you, you don't hear much about that. And speaking of, like, Arnold, what, I mean, this would probably be more fantasy, but, like, you know, it is very action-packed mm -hmm. Conan. Conan, of course, yeah. <laughs> so that would probably trump Cobra if, if we were... Mm could consider that action but i you know right so right. <laughs> yeah and i actually like both the conan movies i know the second one's not quite as fondly remembered but i have good mm -hmm. memories of that one as well and i liked how it was even more fantasy-ish like more magic and more monsters and mm -hmm. yeah as you know as anyone that watches the channel knows i'm not really up to date on modern movies at all but i did about a year or so ago al and i um, from them sight words um kind of went on this kick and watched all the Expendables movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've not seen the third one yet, but yeah, I love the, I love the first two. I saw both, both of those in the theater as well. Uh, it's funny because uh, we were talking about Brian Thompson earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually has a, uh, a Expendable ripoff type uh, movie. I don't know the name of it, oh, wow. but uh, I, I do need to see that though. Yeah, he was, I remember Brian Thompson. He was in a lot at that time oh, yeah. period, yeah. 
Yeah, and he was he was like in Star Trek. I mean, he was you know he has mm-hmm. that face too. Really, really unique face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so jumping back to Van Damme then. Other than Street Fighter, what was your favorite Van Damme movie? Cyborg. Cyborg. Okay. Yeah. I actually saw that one, most of that one at the theater. That's one of the few movies that I actually left. I was with my mom and oh, just no. <laughs> and just kind of the brutality was a bit, it just a little uncomfortable. So we ended up, we left that one. And I didn't see the full thing again until years and years later. Mm-hmm. Scream Factory has a nice version that they put out a couple years ago uh, on, on Blu-ray. I love that one in, in Bloodsport. Are you aware of a Cyborg's connection to Masters of the Universe? Do you know that whole little story? Oh, do not. I do not. Okay, I, I think I've told it before, but if I have, people can just hear it again. It's a good story. Basically, that started out, it was going to be a sequel to Masters of the Universe. And mm-hmm. Albert Pune, um, who, the guy who did Cyborg, and he actually died recently. I don't know if you heard about that, but he was going to do Masters of the Universe Part 2, but just kind of last minute, it, the, I think it was the rights fell through, so he just decided to rewrite it and make it another movie. And that movie ended up being Cyborg, but a lot of the props and costumes and all that stuff was supposed to be for Masters of the Universe Part 2. Dude, that is awesome. <laughs> and even more interesting is that still it got far enough along that it still circulated. So when Cyborg initially started airing on cable, occasionally different um, newspapers when they were doing the TV guide would label it as Masters of the Universe 2 Cyborg. <laughs> that is crazy, dude. Now, now I'm going to have to have a double feature of those two. Yeah. It's got to happen now. <laughs> yeah, that Albert Pune, I assume that's how you pronounce his last name. You know, he had quite an impressive kind of straight the video resume from the late 80s to the early or through the 90s. He did all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. And it was very often action movies with kind of sci-fi things. Yeah. He kind of find his found his niche and mm-hmm. just went with it. I remember I saw Lionheart at the theater. That, I thought okay. that was a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Universal Soldier, did you like that one? Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's that Actually, that might be my favorite Van Damme movie. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say. But that is a good one. But I think Dolph is kind of the one that makes that one. Yeah, yeah. Me and Trent were just talking about they they did a sequel to it, not not the first two sequels, but then like like kind of like a sequel to the original one. And mm-hmm. Goldberg was in it. I, I think rem- it was called. I remember that. That's the time when I was watching wrestling, so I remember they were really hyping that up. Yeah, Megadeth did a uh, track for it. Mm-hmm. We actually just talked about that on the newest episode of Horror Buddies. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, why don't you take a second then to tell the viewers, anyone not familiar with what you do, tell them a little about your channel. Okay. We pretty much focus on, on horror and metal. Yeah, we do like countdowns of like songs. Like we'll have like top 10 Kiss songs. We do that under the name of uh, Heavy Metal Bros. And then uh, me and my friend Trent have Horror Buddies that we uh, watch a horror movie sitting on the couch eating our snacks and uh, laughing, having a good time. Yeah, it's almost kind of <laughs> like watching very a DVD commentary, but it just feels like, and this is the thing I like so much about it, just like you're hanging out with your friends. Yeah, yeah. Like you feel like you're there. Oh, man, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that link will be below. Do check if any of those things he says float your goat, check it out. The Shirt Tales will return after these messages. Rambo and General Warhawk with their battle action weapons, each sold separately. Happy Holidays from all of us here at KLRT Channel 16. Going back to our, our conversation earlier about uh, Cyborg. Mm-hmm. I was I was thinking about doing a double feature, but I don't have Masters of the Universe on Blu-ray. 
Okay. Do you not have it on DVD either? Does it have no. to be? Oh, okay. I don't have it on either. You actually saw recently Canon. There's a nice little little mini Canon set. I've been seeing at Walmart for like 20 bucks and it has masters and over the top, which not an action movie, but that was okay. one of my favorite Sylvester That's, Stallone movies as a kid. That was the the, the uh, arm wrestling Arm wrestling right? movie. Yes. And taking it all the way back. I'm pretty sure it also has Cobra on it. <laughs> nice. See, I got the I got the Cobra Blu-ray uh, from Screen Factory. Oh, good. good. Yeah, I know I'm a mark for Screen Factory. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, people like to rag on Canon films, but I love Canon films. I and mean, you would talk about uh, a company that was not the soundtrack, but the movie track of my childhood, and that's Canon. So many mm -hmm. of those Canon movies were just absolute favorites of mine. Nice. All right, well, folks, I think we're about to, about time to wrap it up. Uh, you have anything you wanted to add, Mister Disheveled by Dawn? Ah, uh, no, man. Uh, you're, you're making me want to watch some action movies. So I'm going to definitely have to do that tonight. Um, and again, I'd like to thank you for having me on. And uh, happy holidays to you and all of your all your viewers out there. Uh, yeah, we, we appreciate you having you on. And folks, again, do, if what he said earlier tickles your fancy, floats your goat at all, go check it out because it really is a good channel with two guys that you just want to hang out with. Thank you, sir. All right, everyone. Well, have a have a good holiday, a Merry Christmas, and keep it wacky. Or have a wacky Christmas, I should say. Oh, yes. And stay spooky. It was the night before Christmas and all through the shop. A creature was stirring and he just wouldn't stop. On chocolate, on strawberry, on vanilla frosted too. Go the colors of Christmas made fresh just for you. So fill up your sack with your favorite delight. And to all a Merry Christmas. In each tasty bite. Tag. The games begin in August. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Arm Wrestling World Championship competition. All I want to do is hurt him, crippling. When the switch goes on, I feel like a machine. The talk is over. Now the action begins. Back off, I'm going to give you a world of hurt, little man. You want it? Sylvester Stallone. I hold you. Come on! Over the top. Ready, PG. No matter what car you drive, this is one truck you won't be able to pass by. The new Dunkin' Donuts toy truck, just $10.99. Beep, beep, beep.